Hey everyone! This week, I was looking up a bunch of stuff to keep working on our mobile game, and as usual, I ended up on Unity's website. I always knew Unity had great courses and prototype projects, but in my research, I discovered they also had reference projects. These projects are all built with Unity and showcase the different uses of many of the tools the engine has to offer. Since I still have a bunch of work to do on our untitled mobile game before I can put another devlog out, I thought it would be fun this week to take a look at some of these reference projects in Unity and see what new things we can learn from this. Alright, so first, let's start with the project I initially stumbled upon while doing my research. It's called Trash Dash and it's an endless runner made for mobile. What's going to be interesting for us in this project is that it's going to show a great way to implement ads and Play Store integration directly into our game. Okay, so now that it's built, this one is clearly not made to be played full screen, so we'll just play it with the normal resolution. After all, it's made for mobile. And okay, it seems this really doesn't want to work on PC. Yeah, well, I'm sure I will explore the code for this later, but for now, let's move on to the next project, since there's not much I can show you here. The project I'm currently loading is called Lost Crypt. This one is also 2D, but made for PC this time. It's a side-scroller, and from what I understood, it primarily showcases animations and visual effects for 2D games. Okay, now we're all loaded in. That's a nice little camera zoom when we first press a control, I like that. Nothing too special so far, although I do notice how the trees in the background are moving. That's a really nice touch. A lot of the time in side scrollers, you'll see static backgrounds. I also love the way the light is on the tree too. Also, I just noticed, but in the foreground, we have little grass blades that slightly obstruct vision, but just enough to be a nice touch and not a pain. Now in this kind of stone temple, the first thing my attention is drawn to is the water. There's a moving pattern, but also it reflects the player. Coming up here, we have a mini cutscene, nice, and oh, that's a really cool effect. Let's go back up. It's nighttime now, and this is a super cool touch. You see, when I approach the ghosts, my light makes some kind of patterns appear on them. That's super cool. It seems to be it for the game now, time to dive into Unity and see what this all looks like. So we're in the project, and the first thing I want to see is how the water is made in the crypt. So it seems it's a combination of a shader and another camera. See, the additional camera looks at a small section of the crypt and displays that image under the transparent water texture. The movement in the water comes from this shader. Let's check it out. So first of all, we have this random noise going upwards and downwards that's combined to make the wave effect. And then we have this one that's tinted to blue to give the basic texture of the water. That's really neat. The only thing I really wanted to take a look at are the trees. It seems that the movement also comes from a shader, but I am not quite sure I fully understand this one. From what it seems to me is that the base texture is moved following this pattern of random noise to create the impression of wind. And finally, the last thing I want to check is the effect in the small cutscene. It is simply a particle system effect made into Unity, and it throws a bunch of randomized little beads. We can change the random seed to make the individual lights go in different directions. Overall, a very cool reference project with a lot of interesting features to study to make 2D games. The final 2D project we're going to take a look at today is Dragon Crashers. The reason I chose this project is that it was made with the UI Toolkit. When I started using the UI Toolkit for my games, I found there were very few resources available to learn it, so I just kinda winged it and used it how I thought you were supposed to. The results this gave for our mobile game is a functional UI, but it took me a very long time to make it and it has the most spaghetti structure I've ever seen. This game, however, has a lot more UI than I have, so I'm very curious to see how it's all managed and structured. 
So first launching the game, I'm already impressed. The UI flows super well, the buttons are responsive. This is exactly the kind of UI I love to have in my mobile game right now. The gameplay is not really what interests me in this project, so I explored the other menus and really I have no words. The UI I've done feels like trash now that I look at this, it's amazing. The good thing is that they have an ebook on the subject included into the game, so I downloaded the PDF and it seems I'm gonna be reading that for sure. But now, time to take a look at how it's made in Unity. No, no, that's, that's not what I meant. Upon opening the project, the scene is displayed in the in-game scene, but I am more interested in the menus, so I go into the main menu scenes and there's nothing, which isn't really surprising as usually the menus are hidden until needed and then they are displayed on the screen. I looked a bit into the assets until I found the UI documents. While this was super interesting and I learned a lot from looking at it, I don't think it'd be very entertaining to show and explain, so I will be moving on to our next game. For our next project, we will switch things up a little bit with a 3D game. Well, it's not really a game, but more of an environment showcase. This uses Unity's Universal Render Pipeline. For those of you who don't know, the Universal Render Pipeline is made to create games that are compatible across a variety of platforms and also very optimized. Pretty much every single game made in Unity uses this. It's a super flexible tool that can be used to create mobile low-end games like the one I'm making in my mobile dev series. By the way, if you haven't checked it out, you definitely should, link in the description. Or it can also make games with high-end graphics like we're about to see here. As you can see, this environment looks beautiful and runs very well. I have a pretty good graphics card, but due to the optimization of the Universal Pipeline, this would run well on any decent PC. Of course, there's a lot to look at in this example and a lot to learn about lighting, light pros and concepts as such, but it is out of the scope of this video to analyze this. Regardless, I feel like this is a really good example to showcase the variety of styles and graphics that are possible with the Unity engine. And for our final game, we are going to take a look at the Unity Sample Environment Asset Pack project. Like we saw earlier, when using the Universal Render Pipeline, we can achieve some pretty impressive graphics with Unity. But there is another pipeline that exists, the High Definition Render Pipeline. What you can do with this is crazy, but unlike the Universal Render Pipeline, what you produce will not be able to run on just any device. This render pipeline uses all the most recent technologies like ray tracing, and you can achieve visuals close to real life. People have even started to use this to render cinematic movies, like in Blender, instead of using it to make games. The scene has finished building, but before I head into it, please leave a like and subscribe for my poor PC that's about to overheat to be able to show you this content. Thank you! So it's definitely not as bad performance-wise as I thought. Last time I checked an HDRP project, it was like a PowerPoint presentation rather than a 60fps game. Regardless, we can see that this is a beautiful environment and it's all made into Unity. While these graphics are super nice, it's possible to achieve even more photorealistic looks in their engine, but for that you'll have to spend a lot of time tweaking settings or pay to get pre-made settings. I've seen some renders made in Unity that could even compete with Unreal Engine 5, which is pretty impressive. Graphics were often what made people choose Unreal over Unity, and with all these new improvements from Unity, I'm very curious to see if more people are going to start adopting the engine. If we dive into the project, we have this, which is a pretty basic looking scene. But if we delve into the actual objects composing it, we can see the complexity that goes into creating an HD environment. These squares are individually placed reflection probes, which make reflections happen. But most impressive thing to look at are the light probes. These are the rays and points used to compute the lighting. As we can see, there is a huge amount of them, creating a very uniform grid. These are pretty expensive to compute, but not as much as actual ray tracing, so they're a good option for anyone trying to make a realistic environment without having to own an expensive ray tracing card. Reference projects are a very good resource to learn, as we saw. Delving into the projects can help you gather critical information on the mechanisms in place to make certain features work. If you're trying to make a game yourself but have trouble with a specific system, go and try to find a public project like this so you can take inspiration. If you want to check out the different projects I've showcased during this video, they will all be in the description below. 
I'm always super impressed by the variety of styles people can achieve with Unity, and I cannot wait to discover even more. That's it for today, thanks a lot for watching. Next devlog should be coming next week. In the meantime, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, follow me on Twitter, leave a comment, but most importantly, stay hydrated, and I will see you next week. Bye!